there is an area of dispute amongst Muslim scholars in general, but specifically between the Shia scholars and the Sunni scholars or historians about the grandfathers of the Prophet, his fathers and grandfathers, his mother for example. Do they have to be believers in God or no? They were disbelievers, they were not believers, maybe some of them were even idol worshippers. The school of Ahl al-Bayt, when it comes to the fathers of the Prophet, is very clear and strict that all of the fathers and grandfathers of the Prophet were faithful individuals who worshipped God and only believed in one God. They were not atheists, they were not polytheists, they were all pure in their belief and their faith. Whereas the majority of Sunni scholars, they believe the parents of the Prophet died kafir, they died as non-believers and most of the Prophet's grandfathers were not believers. Until today, the majority of Sunni scholars and Sunni schools of thought believe in that. Now, when it comes to the Shia scholars, some scholars like Al-Majlisi, Al-Allam Al-Majlisi was a great scholar who lived about thir three centuries ago. He says not only were the fathers and the grandfathers of the Prophet believers, but they were also prophets or successors. Prophets or successors. Remember, how many prophets did we have before the last of the prophets? 124,000 prophets. Now not all of these prophets were universal messengers. Some prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them revelation and they were prophets only for their village, some even only for their circle of friends, some even only for their families, some even for, their, for themselves only. So you had a prophet who had no divine book to give the people, they may not necessarily have preached any particular message, but they were just individuals in society who called onto the path of justice and they were righteous individuals. So Al-Alam Al-Majisi says according to the ahadith that he has researched, the fathers and the grandfathers of the Prophet were all not only believers, but special believers, they were prophets. Many of them received revelation from God. So even Abdul Muttalib, the, the grandfather of the Prophet, he was a prophet, but not a universal prophet. He did receive some sort of divine inspiration or revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The majority of Sunni scholars disagree with that. However, you do have some Sunni scholars who believe that all the fathers and grandfathers of the Prophet were believers. Let me give you some names. Al-Mas'udi, a prominent Sunni scholar. Ya'qubi, a prominent Sunni scholar. Al-Razi, prominent Sunni scholar. Suyuti, a prominent Sunni scholar. In fact, as Suyuti wrote a number of books or booklets to prove that the grandfathers and the fathers of the Prophet were all pure and believers in God. So the Shia school of thought unanimously says the grandfathers of the Prophet all the way to Ibrahim, all the way to Ibrahim because the Prophet is one of the descendants of Ibrahim. Ibrahim is the great grandfather of the Prophet. All of them were believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the proof? When we say that the grandfathers of the Prophet were believers in God, they worshipped God, they didn't worship the idols. What is our proof? We have a number of proofs. First of all, we the Shia, we have hadiths. If you open our books of hadith, we have numerous hadiths from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, specifically from Al Imam al Sadiq that states all the fathers and grandfathers, the ancestors, the direct ancestors of the Prophet were believers in God. Number two, there is a hadith that is found in Sunni books as well. For example, Al Razi in his tafsir. He mentions this hadith. You will find this book in As-Seer Al-Halabiyya, 
which is a book about the biography of the Prophet. You will find this hadith in the book Al-Durr Al-Manthur, which is authored by a Sunni scholar. They mention a hadith from the Prophet in which he says, لم يزل ينقلني الله من أصلاب الطاهرين إلى أرحام المطهرات. The Prophet says it was the case that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would continuously move me or transform me from the line or from the loins of the pure ones and the wombs of the pure ones, the mutahharat, hatta akhrajani fi alamikum, until I was born, I came into this worldly existence. وَلَمْ يُدَنِّسْنِي بِدَنَسِ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me from the impurities of the era of ignorance. In this hadith, the Prophet says, if you look at my ancestry, my, the lineage that came before me, it was pure. أصلاب الطاهرين أرحام المطهرات Now the word sulb in Arabic, you'll find that in the Quran. Sulbi wa taraib. The word sulb in Arabic technically means the pelvis. Technically, right? In English, we also say the loins of someone. Now, symbolically, it means from the progeny. You know, they came from the loins of Adam. What does that mean? From the, from the progeny of Adam. The Prophet says, when you look at my ancestors, the wombs and the loins, they were all pure. Tahir, pure. Now is it possible that one of the grandfathers of the Prophet was a mushrik, a polytheist? Because the Quran says polytheism is an impurity, it's a najasa. The Quran is very clear that polytheism is a type of spiritual uncleanliness. It's a type of spiritual najasa. Therefore, if the Prophet says, ever since the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would transform me through these pure wombs and loins, that means his grandfathers were believers, because if they were not believers, they were not pure. And he's very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that ancestry. Yes. So when he says that hadith, he means both his grandfathers and his grandmothers were pure. Yes, yes, the grandfathers, the direct grandfathers and the mothers, yes. Would this be the same for his uncles? No, this does not apply to his uncles because one of the uncles of the Prophet, as we know Abu Lahab, died as a disbeliever. This is, that's why I said direct grandfathers of the Prophet. So his father, then his father, then his father, then his father, yes. And the Prophet's own mother, of course. They were pure. The uncles, no. If you go out to the relatives, some of them were disbelievers. But we're talking about those who carried the line of the Prophet. Because see, Islam recognizes the role of genes. You, your grandparents, right, they pass down their genes. So even the genes of the Holy Prophet from Ibrahim until him, they are pure genes. And the genes that he received from his grandparents were from pure believing grandparents. So this is one proof that we can use. Now some argued, some of those Sunni scholars who believe that the parents and the grandparents of the Prophet were not faithful, were not, you know, muahideen, monotheists, believers in God. They said what the Prophet means by this hadith, that I come from pure wombs and pure loins, he, he's talking about the, you know, uh, grandfathers who were legitimate. Meaning, none of my grandfathers were illegitimate sons. None of them came out of wedlock. That's what he was meaning, that my ancestors are pure in that sense. So they were not believers, however, they were legitimate children to their parents. None of them came as a result of adultery, for example. But there is no reason for us to specify the meaning of purity here. The Prophet is saying a general statement, the pure wombs and the pure loins. 
Why should we restrict it to this type of purity only? It applies to other types of purity. So this is proof number one. Proof number two, verses 218 and 219 of Surah Ash-Shu'ara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الذي يراك حين تقوم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sees you when you stand. Allah is witnessing and watching. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ What does وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you when you stand and your movement among those who prostrate, those who do sujood. What does this mean? There's two meanings to this. Those who said that the Prophet's grandfathers were not believers, they say, yeah, the meaning of this verse is that Allah sees you when you're standing and also when you're doing sujood with the sajideen with those people who pray around you. However, we have a hadith from Ibn Abbas, from Al-Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam, from Al-Imam Al-Sadiq alayhi salam, that explains a deeper layer to this verse. This is saying, تَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed that you would be from this progeny of Ibrahim السلام, Allah had you move from the wombs and the loins of those who were sajid, of those who would prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sajideen is a reference to his grandparents, to his grandfathers. They were the sajideen, those who prostrated and worshipped God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had you move through their lineage, through their wombs, through their loins. If you find this idea confusing, let me just say this briefly, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also created every human being in the form of dhar, in the form of an Adam. Your existence before you were born started with Adam alayhi salam. Yes, you still didn't have a soul attached to you physically yet, However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that initial seed of your existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put all of that in the back of Adam. There's a verse on, on that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the progeny of Adam when they were in his back or when they were in the backs of their fathers. So this is there's a lot of discussion as to what that means. However, the seed, the origin of our existence started when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. And you know, let's say maybe some scientists today could help us by shedding light on genes. Maybe our genes were all implanted in Adam alayhi salam, the father of humans. And therefore, every human being who would be born after him, the origin of his genes were in Adam. Maybe that's a scientific, biologic way uh, to look at it. But what we know from the Quran and the Hadith is that when Allah created Adam السلام, in his back, now is that a symbolic back? Is that the physical back? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put all of humanity there. And then through the different generations, we would move from one back to another back from one generation to another generation. So the hadith says the Prophet would move from one sajid back to another sajid back, meaning faithful. In other words, his grandfathers were sajideen, they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another proof that the grandparents of the Prophet were muwahid, they were monotheists and they believed in God. Now let me ask you, do you accept, based on your own conscience and fitrah, 
that the greatest of God's creations, the Holy Prophet, his own father, his own mother died as non-believers? Would Allah allow that? I'm just asking you. No. But most Muslims today, brothers and sisters, do believe that. That the very parents of the Prophet died mushrik. And we'll look at some of the hadiths that they've mentioned. That not only are they mushrik, but they're in hell as well. Can we accept that? These, this, when we talked in the first course that we have to purify the biography of the Prophet, this is one area that we need to start. That the ancestry of the Prophet, the lineage is pure from Ibrahim السلام, until the Prophet, it was pure. And the Prophet came from these ancestors who were pure. Yes, brother. So were, so were all of these basically the same as like his uncle where they were keepers of the like Kaaba, that's where they... His grandfathers were the keepers of the Kaaba. And the Sunnis say, yes, they were the keepers of the Kaaba, but they were mushrik. They would prostrate to the idols. They would worship the idols. That's what they would say. Now there's an objection to us, yes. So all schools of thought say that? The, the Sunnis? Say the majority, they yes. Have, they have prominent scholars that don't believe that, but in general... Yes, I mentioned some scholars, but the vast, vast majority of Sunni scholars believe that. They believe that the grandfathers of the Prophet, they were not necessarily believers, in fact, Many of them died kafir. Some of them say they were Hanif. So the Hanif means they were upright on the religion of Ibrahim and they worshipped God. We say that. Some Sunnis like the names I mentioned say that. But the vast majority of Sunnis say no. They were not believers, they were mushrik. Now there's an objection to us from the Sunnis. They say well the Quran says that Ibrahim's father was mushrik. The Quran says Ibrahim's father, Azar, initially Ibrahim promised him that if you follow the right path and you worship God and you distance yourself from the idols, I will do istighfar for you, I will do forgiveness. But then when it became clear to him that he was insisting on worshiping the idols, he condemned him. He condemned him in the sense that he distanced himself from him and the Quran says that he was a mushrik. So see we have a verse in the Quran that the father of Ibrahim, now the father of Ibrahim is also the grandfather of who? The Prophet, right? Because the Prophet comes from that lineage. The Prophet is a descendant of Ibrahim, so if the father of Ibrahim according to the Quran was a mushrik, there you have a great great grandfather of the Prophet who was mushrik. So they're objecting to us and say, okay, there's proof from the Quran. So why do you make it seem as if, you know, this is so outrageous when the Quran actually speaks about it? What is the answer to that? The answer to that, Azar, as the Quran mentions him, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ Azar. The Quran says, when Ibrahim said to his father, Azar, Azar was not the biological father of Ibrahim. He was either his uncle according to most historical traditions or some weak traditions say he was his maternal grandfather. So it wasn't his direct grandfather, his maternal grandfather. It was not his direct grandfather. That's fine. If one of your maternal grandfathers for example is you know um, not a believer, that's not an issue. They don't all of them have to be believers. But your direct fathers and grandfathers have to be believers. So historical accounts tell us that Azar was his uncle. He was his stepfather. The name of the father of Ibrahim was Taruk, not Azar. His name was Taruk. Now because he died when Ibrahim was young, who took care of him? He grew up in the care of his uncle Azar and that's why the Quran calls him Ab, father, because he took care of him. And in Arabic, the one who takes care of you like your stepfather or your uncle, we call him father. So he was not his father, he was actually his uncle. That's our first rebuttal. Number two, and this is a very strong one, we see that in Surah Ibrahim, verse 42, 
Ibrahim, when he would have that discussion with his uncle Azar, it was when he was young, when his youth, because he was taking care of him, he was young. Let's say a teenager and then in his 20s probably. Surah Ibrahim verse 42 talks about Ibrahim in his old age after he had Ismail and Ishaq. In Surah Ibrahim verse 42, he makes a dua. He makes a prayer. What does that prayer say? See, initially he promised his uncle, Azar, that I'll do istighfar for you. I'll ask God to forgive you. When it became clear to him that he is insisting on his disbelief, Allah told Ibrahim, you cannot do istighfar for him anymore because now he's rejecting the truth. So Ibrahim stopped. According to the Quran, Ibrahim stopped doing istighfar for his uncle Azar. Now at the end of his life, Ibrahim is doing the dua, Oh Allah, Allahumma ghfirli, have forgiveness on me and my biological parents. See when the Quran refers to Azar, it uses the word Ab, father. Father is general. In fact, the hadith says your teacher is also your father. Your father-in-law is also your father, symbolically. Ibrahim, when he does this dua for his parents, he doesn't say my father, he says walidayya. The word walid in Arabic is only used to refer to your biological father because technically walid means the one who gives birth. Walida is my mother who gave birth to me and my father, the walid is the one who gave birth to me because he's my father. He was the cause of my birth. So Ibrahim does istighfar for his parents. But wait, if Azar was mushrik and he was his father, how did he do istighfar? This tells you that his walid, his biological father was mu'min, was a believer and hence he did istighfar. Because the Quran prohibited Ibrahim from doing istighfar to that other father, which is his uncle. So the ancestors of the Prophet, his direct ancestors, they were actually pure individuals who believed in God.